Welcome to Derm TV Viewer Question Week for February 2013. Today's episode will feature questions from YouTube viewers. And don't forget, as part of Viewer Question Week, I'll be answering viewer questions over live streaming video at beautyrxlive.com. So if you have a question, tune in this Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Hello, I'm Dr. Neil Schultz, and welcome to Durham TV. Today's first question comes from Colombian Ita 2005. Doctor, I've seen collagen products both drunk and applied on the skin. Do they really work? How can we increase the production of collagen in our body? Well, those are two questions, so let's take the first one about drinking and applying um, collagen. Drinking collagen or ingesting collagen is not going to help you because the collagen is a protein and in your stomach it's going to be broken down into its basic building blocks, which are amino acids. So when it's absorbed, it's not going to build back into collagen. So you can't get collagen that way. Putting it on your skin, again, it's a large protein molecule and it doesn't penetrate into the skin. Now, collagen in a cream has a great slip factor. It feels wonderful when it goes on and it feels, um, it spreads great. So people love the feel of collagen in skincare products, but only as part of the vehicle. It really doesn't do anything topically for your skin. In terms of how do you make more collagen? Well, uh, to increase collagen in your body, that's a little bit tricky and really can't do it in your body, but you can do it in your skin. And the way you do it in your skin is by applying certain ingredients like exfoliants, like glycolic or peptides that can stimulate your fibroblasts in your skin to make more collagen. And there are a bunch of Derm TV episodes about that that you might want to take a look at. Our next question comes from Enchanteral. Um, would using eye creams that's too rich cause seringomas? Seringomas, again, are not clogged pores. Seringomas are little tiny tumors, completely benign, not dangerous, but they are actually enlargements of the sweat duct. And it doesn't happen because it's clogged. It happens because your particular sweat ducts just grow too large. Thanks, Mom. Thanks, Dad. You don't have any control over this. It doesn't matter what kind of eye cream you use. You won't make it worse. And unfortunately, you won't make it better. Lilo Haran says about the episode on the difference between canker sores and herpes. Then what's a cold sore? Well, Lilo, I went back and took a look at the episode because I couldn't understand why that wasn't obvious. And the reason it wasn't obvious is because despite throughout the whole episode my talking about herpes and canker sores, I never once mentioned that herpes are cold sores. So thanks for picking that up and I'm sorry for the confusion. But herpes are cold sores. Cold sores are all caused by herpes and of course then different from the canker sores as explained in the episode. Sorry about that. Eleanor L. Salicylic acid has worked well for my acne. Now I'm using a new product with LHA acid. It says it's a stronger version of salicylic. Can you explain? I'm not sure. It works as well for me. Eleanor, great question because LHA is a relatively new ingredient. It stands for lipohydroxy acid and it's derived from salicylic acid. And in fact, it's a little bit larger than salicylic acid, but very close to it in structure. As a result of being a little bit larger, it's more lipophilic, which means it can penetrate better into the skin. But as a result of being larger, it doesn't penetrate as well. So it's sort of a standoff. The bottom line is, if it's not working as well for you, despite the fact that it's related to salicylic acid, it doesn't work as well as the sal acid products did, then go back to your salicylic acid products. Here, the proof is in the pudding. The only thing that counts is how it works for you. So if you don't see it conferring any advantage to you, go back to your traditional time-proven salicylic acid and let it be a zit buster for you. Ms. Zamify. I'm trying to combat hyperpigmentation and acne using tretinoin 0.1%. I understand that lactic acid is very good for moisturization, exfoliation, and will lighten skin modestly at a concentration of 10% and above, as long as there's no irritation. So far, I'm in. I would like to know how glycolic acid compares to lactic acid for hyperpigmentation issues. Thank you. 
In terms of hyperpigmentation and exfoliation, exfoliation is just removing the extra heaped up dead cells, each of which have too much melanin pigment in them. Of course, you also want to use a bleach to stop the new cells from making too much pigment. But with exfoliation, you're simply peeling off the existing dead cells that just have too much melanin. Well, whoever exfoliates better wins. And it certainly is established that glycolic is a better exfoliant than lactic. So that's why I recommend for hyperpigmentation glycolic as opposed to lactic. Lactic does all of the things that you mentioned. Glycolic just does them better. It's stronger. So my vote's for glycolic. And lastly, Ranger Mommy, as we get older, 50 plus, is it still safe to use a chemical exfoliant? Is it correct that cells only have a limited number of times they can regenerate so you could speed up reaching that limit? Ranger Mommy, I've got good news for you. What you're talking about is a well-established scientific principle called the Hayflick limit, which says that fully differentiated cells in your body can only replicate or duplicate so many times and that's thought to be about 50 or 52 times. If that applied to skin, then certainly exfoliation would wear out your skin real early. But the Hayflick limit does not apply to cells that have been created to regenerate and replicate continuously through life, like blood cells and like skin cells. And the way I can prove that to you is that if the Hayflick limit applied, then as we got older, and we got scratches and cuts, our skin would stop healing. The reality is that your skin does have stem cells, and stem cells have no limit on the number of times they can replicate. So don't be afraid of over exfoliating in terms of using up all of your replications and running out of skin. Nobody who exfoliates regularly has ever run out of skin, I'm happy to tell you. So that's it for today, and don't forget, the subjects from so many Derm TV episodes come from your questions, which are so great. So please keep sending them in, and I'll keep answering as many of them as I can. Please join me again at DermTV.com. If you have a question, please send it to me by visiting DermTV.com slash question. I'm Dr. Neil Schultz, and thank you for watching today.